Hello, my name is Dan Schreiber, this is James Harkin, and we're one half of the podcast, No Such Thing as a Fish, and tonight we are extremely proud to be introducing the 30th first annual Ig Nobel Prizes. Woo! <laughs> the Ig Nobel Prizes is an annual ceremony that honours achievements that first make people laugh and then make them think. They celebrate the unusual, honour the imaginative, and spur people's interest in science, medicine, and technology. This is the dorkiest evening you could ever imagine, ladies and gentlemen, and usually it takes place live in a beautiful venue at Harvard University, but unfortunately this year, due to the global pandemic, they are being held online. And when we say that it is science that makes you laugh, then makes you think, we have some examples, don't we, Dan? Yeah, exactly. Uh, if you're a listener of our podcast, Fish, you'll know that we have mentioned the Ig Nobles many, many times, cited many of the wonderful papers that have been given awards over the last 30 years, including one Ig Nobel Prize winning paper, which was on farting as a defense against the unspeakable dread. Wow, I think farting often causes unspeakable dread, in my experience. There was another one, wasn't there, where it was about walking on the ice, and the way to stop yourself from slipping is by putting socks over your shoes. Yes, that's right. It's easier to walk on ice with your socks outside. Make sure you do that this coming winter. Um, there were things, and James, you mentioned this on the podcast, uh, there was a paper on things stuck up the rectum. A rectal foreign body study that won an Ig Nobel Prize. It included seven light bulbs, a knife sharpener, two flashlights, a wire spring, a snuff box, 11 forms of fruit. And a parking chip tree. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a, jeweler's saw, a jeweler's saw, a frozen pig's tail, and one patient with spectacles, a suitcase key, a tobacco pouch, and a magazine. Wow. They, the awards, they kind of echo the Nobel Prize Awards. So you get them in a lot of different subjects, including chemistry and physics and mathematics and a few other crazy ones as well. The 2011 Ig Nobel for Chemistry was given to some scientists who worked out the exact amount of wasabi to put in a fire alarm to make sure that you wake up if there's a fire. So let's say you can't hear the noise, you can have the smell of wasabi and that will wake you up and save your life. <laughs> what you're going to get now is not just some award ceremony where people accept things, you're going to get craziness, you're going to get people doing stupid things, you're going to get scientists who in their day-to-day -day life might be quite serious people really letting loose. So for instance, in 2014, I actually went to the Ig Nobel ceremony and I opened yes. it, I did the kind of intro speech there was a man stood next to me, painted all in silver, holding a flashlight. He was the human spotlight, and his name is Dr. Jim Brett, and he was one of the inventors of full color 3D printing. No! And, he, and yet he was stood next to me, painted in silver, holding a flashlight. Was that actually him, or was that a 3D printed, colorful <laughs> version of him? If it was, they made a fully walking, talking 3D printed <laughs> version. It seemed pretty wow. real to me. Some other scientists who've won Ig Nobel Prizes include those who showed that why leaning to the left makes the Eiffel Tower look smaller. Uh, there's the scientists who showed that there is no evidence of contagious yawning in the red-footed tortoise. And of course, there was a paper advising doctors who perform colonoscopies of how to minimize the chance that their patients will explode. This is a show, as James says, packed with extraordinary scientific minds who all have a sense of humor even the Nobel laureates who come on to deliver the prizes are showing that science can be funny and interesting. And um, there's quite a few people that you'll see cameoing throughout tonight's show, uh, but you won't necessarily know who they are. So we thought we would quickly point out some of the more interesting ones of them. For example, you will be seeing this man. His name is Case Moliker. Case Moliker won an Ig Nobel Prize uh, for his paper, The First Case of Homosexual Necrophilia in the Mallard Duck. Wow. And you'll yeah. also be seeing this man is Dr. Nakamats, uh, and he has won an Ig Nobel Prize, I think, for documenting every meal that he ever ate for decades and decades. And decades. <laughs> but he's a brilliant man. He has so many yeah. things he's invented. He claims to have invented, is it the DVD player or something like the that? The floppy or disk. Floppy the floppy disk. disk. Yeah. Oh. And I believe it was wooden as well. A wooden floppy disk. A wooden floppy disk, yeah. Amazing. He claims over 3,200 inventions, which he says is the world record for most inventions of anyone. And he likes to have all of his ideas by jumping to the bottom of a swimming pool, basically drowning himself, and in the last second before he drowns, having an idea and writing it on a waterproof notepad and pen that he's invented specifically. <laughs> to document his almost dying ideas. But I want to know, how did he invent the waterproof pen? 
before he came up with a waterproof pen because surely he was going underwater and not being able to write anything. You're right, exactly. Something fishy's going on there. We'll get to the bottom of it. <laughs> but uh, these are two of the amazing people you're going to see. You're also going to see, as I said, Nobel Prize laureates. Uh, keep on the lookout for Andre Geim. Andre Geim has the distinction of not only winning an actual Nobel Prize for his groundbreaking experiments regarding two-dimensional material graphene, uh, one of the most astounding things that's been found in recent times, um, but he also won an Ig Nobel Prize in 2000 for levitating a frog. Yes, really quite something to see. Basically, all this stuff you've heard, you're going to see it for the first time. It is happening right now in Boston. Really, you've got to tune in for the next couple of hours because this will be in all the world newspapers probably tomorrow morning. You will be the first to learn who is winning this year's Ig Nobel Prizes. That's right. And it's worth saying as well that this is a fantastic institution. It's been going longer than 30 years. That's just the prize itself. And usually to fund it and make it happen, they rely on the ticket revenue that they make on the night to pay for everything. They can't do that this year. And so they are self-funding. So they are asking if anyone has a few pounds spare to please help them out so that we can keep this fantastic science comedy institution going on into years and years of the future. So in order to donate, all you need to do is go to improbable.com slash donate and you'll get a few options there. And not only will you be donating to this fantastic live ceremony, but also to the other work that is done by the Improbable Group. Uh, there's the Annals of Improbable Research, their magazine. There's the Improbable Research podcast. There's the Improbable blog. There are live events that take place all over the world, which hopefully they can get back to once this pandemic is gone. They are heroes of science comedy. Please donate to them. But for now, sit back and enjoy the greatest geek show on earth. It is the 30th first annual Ig Nobel Prizes. Yes! <laughs> Take your time. I need at least five more minutes. Thank you. Your attention, please. Welcome. This is the theater safety announcement. If you have come to an event in Sanders Theater at Harvard University, you know the drill. Please take a moment to identify the nearest exit. Please silence all cell phones, pagers, and other electronic devices. No food is permitted inside the theater, unless the food is inside you, etc., etc. But this is 2020. We are not in Sanders Theater. The COVID-19 pandemic is keeping each of us in our own home. So do any damn thing you want. Don't identify the nearest exit. Shout at your cell phone. Eat something. Next year, or whenever we're all together, back in Sanders Theater, we'll ask you to be a little restrained. But today, no. Get your paper airplanes ready. I said get your paper airplanes ready. The 30th first annual Ig Nobel Prize ceremony is about to begin. Good evening. I am a remote, digital, global, at-home air traffic controller. I'm also Robin Abrams. I write the misconduct column for the Boston Globe, an advice column about ethics, etiquette, and engineering. Do you have your airplanes prepared and ready for launch? Good, but don't throw them yet. There'll be three airplane tosses in tonight's ceremony. One now, two later. Remember, safety first. Get your airplanes ready for launch on the count of 10. But first, allow me to say welcome to the 30th first annual Ig Nobel Prize Ceremony. And now, on the count of 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0.
ladies and gentlemen, and well, whoever, welcome to the 30th first annual Ig Nobel Prize ceremony. And now, Hello. Professor G. Did I turn my sound up? I, I, I just have to see it. the computer size. I don't know if it's the computer sound or not. I can turn it up. Hold on. All right, let's do it. And now, Professor Jean Burko Gleason will deliver the traditional Ig Nobel Prize welcome, welcome speech. Welcome, welcome. We are gathered, um, not gathered at Sanders. Where the hell is everybody? We are gathered, um, not gathered, at Sanders Theater at Harvard University. I am Karen Hopkin, creator of the Stud Muffins of Science calendar. Well, thank you. Soon, we will welcome our most special guests, the new Ig Nobel Prize winners. This year's winners represent six continents. And now, Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, literati, glitterati, pseudo-intellectuals, quasi-pseudo-intellectuals, pseudo-quasi-intellectuals, bugs, pests, and the rest of you, may I introduce our Master of Ceremonies, the editor of the Annals of Improbable Research, Chief Airhead, Mark Abrams. We are gathered, uh, not gathered, tonight to honor some remarkable individuals and groups. Each of them has done something that makes people laugh, then think. I take my hat off to them. I leave my other hat on. The Ig Nobel Prize ceremony is produced by the magazine Annals of Improbable Research, and it's co-sponsored by the Harvard Radcliffe Student Physics Association and by the Harvard Radcliffe Science Fiction Association. This is the year the COVID-19 pandemic arrived. It's also the 30th year of the Ig Nobel Prize ceremony. Because of the pandemic, instead of doing this in front of 1,100 people jammed together in a big theater, we're doing it all online. Ugh. But that's the way things are. So let's refresh your memory or bring you up to speed by showing you a very quick 15 second long look at the way we usually do this. One, go! Welcome, welcome. The human Ig Nobel. Italian pizza. Cockroaches. Javier Morales. The presumption that others have a mind. Chewing. Tiny notebooks. That was pretty quick. The editors of the Annals of Improbable Research have chosen a theme for this year's Ig Nobel Prize ceremony, and that theme is bugs. Yes, bugs. The word has several meanings. We might explore some of those meanings tonight. We might not. The theme may or may not apply to particular things. Tonight, 10 prizes will be given. The achievements speak for themselves all too eloquently. The prizes will be physically presented to the winners by Nobel laureates. Please welcome the Nobel laureates who will present the prizes. A 1993 Nobel laureate in physiology or medicine, Rich Roberts. Hey, I have uh, my Nobel hat. Oh, very good. A 2018 Nobel laureate in chemistry, Francis Arnold. Okay. Uh, 2008 <laughs> Nobel laureate in chemistry, Marty Chalfi. Anyway, sorry, I have these weird pieces of information scattered in my head. Uh, 2007 Nobel laureate in economics, Eric Maskin. You're, you're seeing my keyboard now. <laughs> uh, 2010 Nobel laureate in physics, who 10 years prior to getting his Nobel Prize in physics was awarded an Ig Nobel Prize in physics. Andre Geim. What? Uh, 1990 Nobel laureate in physics, Jerome Friedman, 
who for 28 of the previous 29 years was not able to join us at the ceremony. This year, Professor Friedman is not able to join us at the ceremony once again. And once again, he joins us via the magic of recorded video. Congratulations. I hope you are enjoying this as much as I am. Thank you, Professor Friedman. Hi, I'm sorry I'm a little late, but I did manage to get here. Unfortunately, I can't stay long, so I have to leave now. But I will be back next year, and I hope to see you then. Until then, bye-bye, and have a great time. <laughs> Tonight's webcast is happening in several languages, in addition to English, which is the language I believe I am speaking right now. There will be versions also, there are versions also in Spanish, in Japanese, and in Chinese. And on the day after Thanksgiving in the United States, there will be a special radio version on the Science Friday program, an edited version hosted by Ira Flato. And now, let's get it over with. The awarding of the 2020 Ig Nobel Prizes. We're giving out 10 prizes. The winners come from many nations on six continents. Karen and Christopher, please tell them what they have won. This year's winners each receive an Ig Nobel Prize. You don't say. I do say. They also get a piece of paper saying they've won an Ig Nobel Prize. This piece of paper has been signed by several Nobel laureates. Neat. Do they win any money? Ten trillion dollars. Ten trillion smackaroons? Ten trillion dollars! U.S. dollars? Zimbabwean dollars! A Zimbabwean ten trillion dollar bill. A real Zimbabwean ten trillion dollar bill? Well... You know, with the pandemic uh, this year, uh, we've had to make some adjustments. Mm. So the winners will receive a real counterfeit Zimbabwean $10 trillion bill. Risque. <laughs> Do know. they win anything else? Um, nothing. Nothing? <laughs> nothing. Well, thank you, Mother. You're welcome, son. And now the coveted Ig Nobel Prize. This year's prize is a PDF document that can be printed and assembled to make a six-sided box. Five of the sides each show a different kind of bug. We have a flea, a cockroach, a computer bug, a norovirus stomach bug, and a Volkswagen Beetle. Uh -huh. The sixth side is an instruction sheet that tells you how to assemble your prize. Cool beans. <laughs> the Acoustics Prize. The Ig Nobel Acoustics Prize goes to a team that represents the countries of Austria, Sweden, Japan, the USA, and Switzerland. The prize is awarded to Stefan Reber, Takeshi Nishimura, Judith Janisch, Mark Robertson, and Tecumseh Fitch for inducing a female Chinese alligator to bellow in an airtight chamber filled with helium-enriched air. The <laughs> prize will be presented by Nobel laureate Andre Geim, who himself has an Ig Nobel Prize awarded 20 years ago. Here is Andre Geim. Uh, congratulations, guys. Uh, a great achievement. Do the same next time, but a little bit better. Without Ig, I hope. Now hand him the prize, please. What's your prize, guys? Very good, with something similar to very important things these days. <laughs> 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 
And here is your $10 trillion bill. <laughs> now let's listen to the pre-recorded acceptance speech prepared by the winners. Thank you very much. To the best of our knowledge, our study is the first to show that also alligators sound strange when inhaling a party balloon. Our question was whether alligators have vocal tract resonances like human speech. And the key is that sound travels faster in helium. This makes the air passages seem shorter, making the resonances higher. So if you breathe helium and the frequencies shift upward, that shows that they're resonances. The hard part is getting an alligator to breathe helium. Our subject was a Chinese alligator. We recorded her inhaling normal air and heliox, a helium oxygen mixture. And here we go, here's one call in air and one call in heliox. They sound different, they look different, and this is evidence that also non-avian reptiles have resonances in their vocalizations. We are super happy to accept our Ig Nobel Prize! Yes! The Psychology Prize! The winners are from Canada and the USA. The Psychology Prize is awarded to Miranda Jackman and Nicholas Rule for devising a method to identify narcissists by examining their eyebrows. The prize will be presented by Nobel laureate Eric Maskin. And Eric will present the prize. And here is the coveted Ig Nobel Prize, and we turn it over to you. Congratulations. You're supposed to receive it. Yes. Yeah, sorry, I'm just trying to get my, my cube together here. It took me so long to put together. How does it look? Oh, that looks great. Uh, this one's supposed to look like? Yeah. Congratulations. And uh, here is your ten trillion dollar bill. The winners will now present their acceptance speech by recorded video. Before they do that, Mr. Rule, do you have anything to say about your eyebrows? What would you say about each other? Just looking at eyebrows. Nick's not a narcissist. <laughs> <laughs> and Miranda's definitely not. She's one of the most humble people I've ever met. Hi everyone, we just want to say thank you so much for this award. We are very excited. We just want to dedicate this award to everyone who's done data-driven research and found themselves somewhere they never expected. And now, here is a musical treat, the world premiere of a new mini-opera called Dream Little Cockroach. There are four acts, one now, two later, and one after that. Here are our narrators. Our main character in this little opera is a cockroach. Cockroach. Well, or maybe he's a human being. I'm, I'm a little confused about that. But here's the story. Right now, he is sleeping a deep, happy sleep. But it seems that during this sleep, he has metamorphosized. He has been transformed from a cockroach, cockroach into a human being. And our little cockroach <laughs> seems to be hearing voices in his sleep. If you listen, maybe you can hear voices too. Hark, I say, hark! Listen carefully. <laughs> Up. A big change is impending. It 
so snug, but now you are a man. Your home and hopes can span from crashing in a can to days in which you plan to become successful, though it's stressful. Big two legged man. Become successful, though it's stressful. Big two legged man. Oh man. Oh man. Don't let it bug you, man. Before you went to sleep, you know you were a cockroach. You were a cockroach. You were a cockroach. That was then and this is now and now you. Oh, you are a human being, not a cockroach, not a cockroach. Blood. Oh dear, is what you but now you're just a grody, ugly human. Oh, dear sir. But now you must accommodate and leave your day. Disgusting ways. With human beings, they're scared at night. So stupid. Scared at night. So stupid, much too. are from India and Pakistan. The Ig Nobel Peace Prize is awarded to the governments of India and Pakistan for having their diplomats surreptitiously ring each other's doorbells in the middle of the night and then run away before anyone had a chance to answer the door. The winners could not or would not be with us today. Now get set for something special, the 24-7 lectures. We have invited several of the world's top thinkers to tell us a little bit about what they are thinking about. Each will describe their subject twice. First, a complete technical description in 24 seconds, and then a clear summary that anyone can understand in seven words. The time limits will be enforced by various musicians. The next 24-7 lecture will be delivered by Dr. Elena Bodnar. In the year 2009, she was awarded an Ig Nobel Prize for Public Health for inventing a brassiere that, in an emergency, can be quickly separated into a pair of protective face masks, one to save your life, the other to save the life of some lucky bystander. Please welcome Dr. Elena Bodnar. Her topic, the emergency bra. First, a complete technical description in 24 seconds. On your mark, get set, go. The emergency bra is a personal protective garment with a primary function to support the breast. It can quickly and easily transform into face masks to decrease inhalation of harmful particles in case of an emergency. During pandemics such as COVID, it also serves the additional function of protecting others by reducing exposure to the respiratory secretions of the mask wearer when standard PPE 
not readily available. And now a clear summary that anyone can understand in seven words. On your mark, get set, go. Emergency bra masks. Protect others. Care. Wear. Share. And just because it's so important, Mark, I would like to give one to you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I... You're welcome. Like this? Yes. Thank you, Dr. Bodnar. Thank you. You're welcome. My pleasure. The next 24-7 lecture will be delivered by a biologist who won a Nobel Prize in 2008 for the discovery and development of the green fluorescent protein, GFP. Here is Marty Chalfie, his topic, Green Fluorescent Protein, GFP. First, a complete technical description of the subject in 24 seconds. On your mark, get set, go. The 11 beta strands in the single alpha helix of the Aquaria Victoria Green Fluorescent Protein form a beta can, which autocatalytically cyclizes the peptide backbone between serine 65 and glycine 67 to form a resonance structure that absorbs light at 470 nanometers and emits light at 509. Transcriptional and translational fusions allow biological processes in eukaryotes, prokaryotes, and archaea to be studied in real time. <laughs> And now a clear description that anyone can understand in seven words. On your mark, get set, go. GFP, shine blue, see green, watch light. The physics prize. The winners this year represent the countries Australia, Ukraine, France, Italy, Germany, the UK, and South Africa. The Ig Nobel Physics Prize is awarded this year to Ivan Maximov and Andrei Patotsky for determining experimentally what happens to the shape of a living earthworm when one vibrates the earthworm at high frequency. The prize will be presented by Nobel laureate Eric Maskin. Here is the prize. Many congratulations to you both. Thank you very much. To you. Thank you. It's an honor. And uh, here is your $10 trillion bill, Bob Way. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. It's a great honor. The winners will now present their pre-recorded acceptance speech. Hi, I'm Ivan. And I'm Andre. Greetings from Melbourne. We are honored to receive the prize this year. We thought that it would be interesting to shake the worm like this. The body starts to wobble and we use light and the photodetector to measure the vibration. This should help us to better understand how the nerve pulses propagate here and here. We had some difficult time trying to understand what these results might be good for. Then we realized that the body of the worm wobbles, very similar to the ripples on the water surface. We then estimated how stretchable the worm body actually is. Just a thought, Ivan, do you think we should try to vibrate other animals? The Economics Prize. The 
winners this year represent these countries, Scotland, Poland, France, Brazil, Chile, Colombia, Australia, and Italy. The economics prize is awarded to Christopher Watkins, Juan David Leon Gomez, Jean Beauvais, Agnieszka Zelanowicz, Max Korbmacher, Marco Antonio Correa Varea, Ana Maria Fernandez, Danielle Wagstaff, and Samuela Bolgan for trying to quantify the relationship between different countries' national income inequality and the average amount of mouth-to-mouth kissing. prize will be presented by Nobel laureate Francis Arnold. I want to congratulate you on this truly enlightening bit of work that will change our lives. I award you this. Thank you very much. And uh, here is your $10 trillion bill. Thank you very much. I, actually, I have a question. With less kissing, will there be more or less income inequality? Now that the world isn't kissing anymore, will we see it disappear? Uh, n no, I'm afraid. The winners will now present their acceptance speech by pre-recorded video, we hope. Thank you to the Ig Nobel panel for this award and to all my co-authors for their contributions to this cross-cultural research project. Um, our paper finds that people deem kissing more important at the later stages of a romantic relationship compared to the start of a romantic relationship. We find two factors involved in a good kiss, sensory factors and a factor called technique contact and arousal. Women seem to care more about the senses than men do when evaluating a good kiss and this factor comprises the most important item um, when considering what makes a good kiss, uh, namely pleasantness of breath. Our main finding is that national wealth explains cultural differences in French kissing frequency. People from less economically equal countries report kissing their partner more often compared to people from more equal countries. Um, an attempt to summarise our research in haiku form, uh, mountains of kisses when the many have little, uh, sharing alpine mouths. Thank you very much. It's time for act two of the mini opera Dream Little Cockroach. Here are our narrators. Our hero's family members, his relatives if you will, have all heard the man's story. Well you heard the story too just a little while ago. The man says he metamorphosized from a cockroach cockroach into a human being this is exciting news for the family members all those relatives have gathered together and they are going to decide together whether they too are cockroaches cockroaches just who became humans and they are coming around to the idea that maybe this is not a bad thing Okay, family members, tell us about it. I don't know, I don't know what to do. Oh, it's crazy, but maybe it's true. Why a cockroach? Ew, ew, ew. As a family, we are perplexed. So how can we figure out what will come next? Are we all cockroaches? We must decide to stand with pride. Or scurry and hide. If we are cockroaches, some things are good. Yes, we have advantages not understood by simple people who've not had a metamorphosis. How sad. How sad they go their whole life. Oh, they never change. They linger like lobby hopes half realized. Their basic nature never revised. They, so to speak, are just not sclerotized. They are soft. And it's hard. It's so hard to go your entire life with no hard shell. So to speak, to 
protect you from peak time of danger from some dastardly stranger. But when it's steamy, things get dreamy. Where things decay, he gets okay. Now let's figure out the basic mystery. Are we just like him? These are not jokes. We're better than most other folks. And now we think we know why. Yes, now we think we know why that they are only human. Oh, yes, they typify. They typify all the terrible things that were typical of us until, until we learned Till we learned Till we learned when the truth, truth That our entire family Are cockroaches Yes, yes we, we are, are. <laughs> There's something special with our family. Unlike the rest of you, our destiny. If there should be catastrophe, they think that we will survive. We will survive. Maybe we will. Maybe they won't. Ha ha ha! Ha ha ha! Cock roach. 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 Now enjoy this brief intermission. We hope you enjoyed this brief intermission. The Management Prize. The winners are from China. The Management Prize this year is awarded to Shi Guang An, Mo Tian Shang, Yang Kang Sheng, Yang Guang Sheng and Ling Xianzi, five professional hitmen in Guangxi, China, who managed a contract for a hit job, a murder performed for money, in the following way. After accepting payment to perform the murder, Shi Guang An then instead subcontracted the task to Mo Tian Xiang, who then instead subcontracted the task to Yang Kang Sheng, who then instead subcontracted the task to Yang Guangsheng, who then instead subcontracted the task to Ling Xian Si, with each subsequently enlisted hitman receiving a smaller percentage of the fee and nobody actually performing a murder. The winners could not or would not be with us today. It's time for round two of the 24-7 lectures. The next 24-7 lecture will be delivered by an associate professor at the National Institute of Informatics in Tokyo, Japan. Please welcome Masako Kishida. Her topic, computer bugs. First, a complete technical description in 24 seconds. On your mark, get set, go. A computer bug is an error or flaw in software or hardware that causes unexpected behaviors. Whether you use Python, Java, Scratch, MATLAB, Haskell, or the SQL brain crash, your code, or white space to write computer code, the more complex the problem is, the more bugs there are. One of the bugs that is fuzzy, finicky, plus negative fix is a Heisen bug, which seems to disappear when we try to investigate it. And now, a clear summary that anyone can understand in seven words. On your mark, get set, go. Bugs. 
can't find them, can't avoid them. The next 24-7 lecture will be delivered by a professor in the Wildlife Ecology and Conservation Department at the University of Florida. In the year 1997, he was awarded an Ig Nobel Prize for entomology for writing the book That Gunk on Your Car, which identifies the insect splats that appear on automobile windshields. Please welcome Mark Hostetler. His topic, insects. First, a complete technical description in 24 seconds. On your mark, get set, go. Insects are the most diverse group of animals with over 1 million species described. Flying, swimming, and crawling, they encount we encounter them every day, often without even realizing it. Incredibly important as pollinators and as part of the food chain, we cannot live without them. Incredible animals. Think of a butterfly closing from a chrysalis. I'm sitting here on my porch, and there's butterflies all around me, and all kinds of potatoes. And now, a clear summary that anyone can understand in seven words. On your mark, get set, go. Insects are part of everything we eat. The second paper airplane deluge is about to begin. Please prepare your airplanes for launch. On 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, Two, one, zero. I want to speak briefly about the past and the future. Back in the year 2002, the Ig Nobel Peace Prize was awarded to Keita Sato, Matsumi Suzuki, and Norio Kogure of Japan for promoting peace and harmony between the species by inventing Baolingual, a computer-based automatic dog-to-human language translation device. Now, today, in the year 2020, my colleague here, who is a dog, will communicate directly to you using only the force of her personality. Her name is Wednesday. As you can see, Wednesday hopes that you will help us fund the Ig Nobel Prizes. In the years, in the years before the pandemic, funding was a struggle for us. Now, Thanks to the pandemic, it's an adventure. You can help us keep the Ig Nobel Prizes alive and well for next year and on into a time that Wednesday calls the future. Do that at our website, improbable.com slash donate. Wednesday thanks you. So do I. The Entomology Prize. The winner is from the USA. The Entomology Prize is awarded to Richard Vetter for collecting evidence that many entomologists, scientists who study insects, are afraid of spiders, which are not insects. The prize will be presented by Nobel laureate Rich Roberts.
Well, Dr. Vetter, many congratulations. This is a well-won prize, and I fully understand anybody being frightened of spiders, but I hope you're not. And uh, here is your 10 trillion dollar bill from Zimbabwe. I'll try not to spend it all in one place. Wish you luck. Yeah, that may be difficult. <laughs> and now we'll hear the acceptance speech from the winner. Hi, this is a spider and I'm an arachnologist. I study uh, people-spider interactions, mostly medical issues, but also arachnophobia. It always surprises me when my entomology colleagues come up to me and confide in me that they're afraid of spiders. I would think that with, considering the morphological diversity that insects pre present, ladybugs, butterflies, beetles, etc., that they would just assume a spider into the general arthropod body form uh, situation. But they don't. They develop arachnophobia and they treat spiders differently than insects. So I ran a questionnaire study looking at entomologists who are afraid of spiders. For these people, two more legs makes a big difference. Booga booga! It's time for act three of the mini opera, Dream Little Cockroach. Here are our narrators. Well, the news keeps spreading. The news about the man who says he metamorphosized from a cockroach, cockroach. into a human. Word has reached the entomologists. Entomologists are people who study bugs. These entomologists, well, these, these scientists, they're having a big professional meeting to discuss this strange news. Well, look at them. There's a scientist who studies bed bugs, and a scientist who studies locusts, and one who studies beetles, and one who studies mosquitoes. Oh, everybody is so excited. These entomologists are excited because they have decided that they too are originally bugs, probably. Let's watch them molt. Oh, sorry. Let's watch them emote. I meant emote. Let's watch them emote. Are we all metamorphosized insects? Yes, that makes sense in so many My favorite, and now I know why. And now that I know I'm a bed bug, I'm so happy that I could cry. I love that to see Max Boet's high, and see Max Hilo Salus too, and with not an ounce of regret. Exceedingly blood 
I'm a dung beetle, yes, a dung beetle, known for my elegant, well-refined taste. Yes, 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 I'm a dung beetle. I have a taste for what you jokers waste. I ask you entomologically, give me R-E-S-B-E-C-T. That's one happy bunch of scientists. Hmm? And one influential bunch of scientists. After that meeting, word spread quickly to all the other scientists. La cucaracha, la cucaracha, la cucaracha, la cucaracha. Da, 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 da. La cucaracha, la cucaracha. La cucaracha, la cucaracha, la cucaracha, la cucaracha. 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 Ya no puede caminar. Porque no tiene, porque le falta marihuana que fumar. The Medicine Prize. The winners are from the Netherlands and Belgium. The Ig Nobel Medicine Prize is awarded this year to Ninke Wulink, Damien Denis, and Arnaud van Loon for diagnosing a long unrecognized medical condition, misophonia, the distress at hearing other people make chewing sounds. The prize will be presented by Nobel laureate Francis Arnold. I commend you on this truly impressive and important work, and I award you this Ig Nobel Prize. Thank you. Wonderful. Whoa. And uh, here is your $10 trillion bill. Wow. Ha! Thank you. I need to know, is there a cure? Yes, we have a cure. Arnold, we have published our cure. It's the sound of slicking. It is alike the sound of stepping in the mud. And if you think it's stepping in the mud, you don't get angry. The winners will now present their acceptance speech via recorded video. We all recognize these annoying sounds of people hearing humans smacking and slurping. But some of us, they develop a severe psychiatric disorder. It's called misophonia. In misophonia, patients are obsessed with human sounds and they develop aggressive emotions and finally get socially isolated because of avoidance. At the Amsterdam University Medical Hospital, our team was the first to discover the full clinical picture and we traced it back to childhood. And we also found the specific brain circuitry responsible for these symptoms. And at the moment, we are exploring the genetics of misophonia. 
It sounds funny, but it's severe. Patients become depressed, lose their jobs and relations. We developed an innovative treatment using sound manipulation and movie clips. Thank you very much for this wonderful prize and we are very happy with it and it's really a tribute to our patients. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Binnen de 60 seconden. Hey, cool guys! <laughs> We've done it! <laughs> okay. It's time for round three of the 24-7 lectures. The next 24-7 lecture will be delivered by professor and head of entomology at the University of Illinois and editor-in-chief of the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, May Berenbaum. Her topic, the insect apocalypse. First, a complete technical description of the subject in 24 seconds. On your mark, get set, go. Long-term studies now document catastrophic declines in insect biomass and diversity in what's called the insect apocalypse. Anthropogenic causes include habitat loss via monoculture, agriculture, urbanization, resource extraction, and greenhouse gas emissions. Declines are consequential because insects contribute irreplaceable ecosystem services, including pollination for the world's angiosperms, nutrient cycling, and biocontrol. They're keystone species in a myriad of trophic webs on which humans... <laughs> And now a clear summary that anyone can understand in seven words. On your mark, get set, go. Insects, you'll be sorry when they're gone. The next 24-7 lecture will be delivered by an entomologist at the Max Planck Institute of Animal Behavior at the University of Constance, Germany. In the year 2015, he was awarded an Ig Nobel Prize jointly in the fields of entomology and physiology for carefully arranging for honeybees to sting him repeatedly on 25 different locations on his body to learn which locations are the least painful, the skull, middle toe tip, and upper arm, and which are the most painful, the nostril, upper lip, and penis shaft. Please welcome Michael Smith. His topic, bee stings. First, a complete technical description of the subject in 24 seconds. On your mark, get set, go. Honeybee defensive maneuvers typically target key regions on mammalian subjects, suggesting that evolutionary pressures have shaped the superorganism for the efficient delivery of defense. While pressure pain is well characterized during the human experience, we, me, want to determine if, and if so, how, the painfulness of honeybee stings would map across the human body, similar to a sting pain cement a century homunculus. The most painful locations aggregated airways, suggesting that the human body prioritizes pain to match vulnerability. <laughs> And now a clear summary that anyone can understand in seven words. On your mark, get set, go. Bee stings. Some spots are seriously painful. And now the third and final airplane launch with special guest star, Wednesday Abrams. Ready to go in 10, 9, Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero.
the Medical Education Prize. <laughs> the winners are from Brazil, the UK, India, Mexico, Belarus, the USA, Turkey, Russia, and Turkmenistan. The Medical Education Prize is awarded to Jair Bolsonaro of Brazil, Boris Johnson of the United Kingdom, Narendra Modi of India, Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador of Mexico, Alexander Lukashenko of Belarus, Donald Trump of the USA, Recep Tayyip Erdogan of Turkey, Vladimir Putin of Russia, and Gurbangli Mohamedov of Turkmenistan for using the COVID-19 viral pandemic to teach the world that politicians can have a more immediate effect on life and death than scientists and doctors can. The winners could not or would not be with us today. We want to offer special congratulations to one of the co-winners, to Alexander Lukashenko. This is the second Ig Nobel Prize awarded to Alexander Lukashenko. In the year 2013, the Ig Nobel Peace Prize was awarded jointly to Alexander Lukashenko for making it illegal to applaud in public and to the Belarus State Police for arresting a one-armed man for applauding. Congratulations again to Alexander Lukashenko. The Materials Science Prize. The Materials Science Prize winners are from the USA and the UK. The Materials Science Prize is awarded to Metin Aaron, Michelle Beber, James Norris, Alyssa Perone, Ashley Rutkowski, Michael Wilson, and Mary Ann Raganti for showing that knives manufactured from frozen human feces do not work well. The prize will be presented by Nobel laureate Marty Chalfie. Oh, congratulations to all of you. But before giving you the prize, I have a few questions about your work, and I actually welcome this opportunity to get the inside poop. <laughs> Did your colleagues feel this was a waste of your talents? I, to be honest, I think that this study is really going to go down in the annals of science. <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't even get a whiff of success. <laughs> well, I got a whiff of something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so again, thank you all very, very much and congratulations. And here is thank your you. prize. Yeah. And, uh, here is your $10 trillion bill. Dollars. Okay. Now, if you've all got all that stuff out of your system, uh, we'll hear the pre-recorded we'll pre video acceptance speech from the winners. Hi there, my name is Metin Aaron, and I just want to thank the Ig Nobel Awards Committee for this prize, and all of the co-authors of this paper also want to give a personal thanks. Thank you so much.
This is truly a pinnacle of my scientific career. It is an honor to be an Ig Nobel Prize winner. Thank you for this award. Thank you so much for this award. It is such an honor to receive this award. Thank you so much for giving us this Ig Nobel Prize. I consider it a great privilege to accept this esteemed award. Thank you so much. Thank you for recognizing how much hard work and personal effort I put into this research project. Once again, thank you so much. The new Ig Nobel Prize winners will give free public lectures to explain, if they can, what they did and why they did it. In a normal non-pandemic year, we do this at MIT, at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. But we can't do that this year. So the lectures will be entirely online. You can find a schedule for that on our website. That's at improbable.com. Now it's time, time for the thrilling conclusion to tonight's mini opera, the world premiere of Dream Little Cockroach. Here are our narrators. Well, the news has spread far and wide too. The public has heard about the man who was a cockroach mm -hmm, and then metamorphosized into a human. The public, the entire population, loves the idea. The public decides overwhelmingly that they themselves might be former insects. Well, probably we are all former insects. Now, we need a leader. We need a hard-headed leader. We need a leader who knows how to survive. But who should lead us? Who should be our leader? That's so obvious. La cucaracha! La cucaracha! La cucaracha! La cucaracha! Is he a man? Who really knows? Is he a bug? Well, I suppose. Look at his mouth. Look at his nose. Can't see much else because he's, he's wearing clothes. Cockroach, cockroach, living in the dark. Cockroach, cockroach, history so stark. Cockroach, cockroach, we appreciate it. We're all like his display. Maybe like him, I was at first. Raised in neglect, my life was cursed. Then just like him, my fate reversed. Once just an insect, now I come first. Cockroach, cockroach, she's on tape. Cockroach, cockroach, she's the one for me. Cockroach, cockroach, tell us what to do. Cockroach, dear cockroach, we love you. Cockroach, cockroach, she was on tape. Cockroach, cockroach, she's the one for me. The opera performers, the Pandemic Cockroach Orchestra, piano, Yulia Yoon, accordion, Dr. Thomas Michel, cello, Dr. Julie Ryman, Bass, Dr. Bruce Copeland. The narrators, Karen Hopkin, Christopher Hopkin. The soloists, Alexi Elisiv. 
Bobby Hill. Dr. Fred Tsai. Ted Sharp. Jan Hadland. Lee Jo Shah. And soloist and our opera director, Maria Ferrante. Now, Professor Jean Burko Gleason will deliver the traditional Ig Nobel goodbye, goodbye speech. Normally at this point, we ask everyone in the ceremony to gather please at the front of the stage for a pointless photo opportunity. But that's not possible this year. So here is a 10 second look back at the entire ceremony. Until this year, we funded everything almost entirely from ticket revenues. But this year, there's no audience, no tickets, no ticket revenues, and we have pretty much no funding. What we do have is a tremendous number of people who put in a tremendous amount of volunteer work to do all sorts of good stuff. Please take a look at this five second compressed version of everything you've just seen. If you'd like to help the Ig Nobel Prize ceremony continue, maybe for another 30 years or maybe more, that's easy, we hope. You can donate a little money or a lot of money if you like. You can do that at our website at improbable.com donate. And you can also, if you want, subscribe to the magazine. Now, we hate to say goodbye, goodbye. So here is a one second compressed version of everything you have just seen. We hope, we hope that next year the pandemic will have been tamed and we can do the 31st, first annual Ig Nobel Prize ceremony back in Sanders Theater, maybe with you in the audience throwing paper airplanes at us. For now, on behalf of the Harvard Radcliffe Society of Physics students and the Harvard Radcliffe Science Fiction Association, and especially from all of us at Improbable Research, please remember this one thing. If you did not win an Ig Nobel Prize this year, and especially if you did, better luck next year. Thank you. La cucaracha, la cucaracha. La cucaracha, la cucaracha. La cucaracha, la cucaracha. La cucaracha, la cucaracha, la 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 la. La cucaracha, la cucaracha. La cucaracha, la cucaracha. La cucaracha, la cucaracha. <laughs> Show me how would you do it. I don't know if you yeah. You yeah. don't know that song? Yeah. Winners, could you sing that song? La cucaracha. La cucaracha. La cucaracha. La cucaracha. La cucaracha. La cucaracha. La cucaracha.
tiene porque le falta marihuana para fumar. La cucaracha, la cucaracha, ya no puede caminar porque no tiene, porque le falta las dos patitas de atrás. Thank <laughs> you.